do you have a more formal process as well? Like back at that previous iteration, there was a, a write-up process that was available. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that that dropped as soon as you moved to the church space. It was so small, nothing could wait. And then as far as I know, it didn't come back the last time I checked in. Has, has anything arisen since then? Mm -hmm. It actually came back for a little bit when we mm. did what we call mediation committee and we called it the MC, which is okay. we actually learned about, you know, the Sudbury models. We learned the JC system, the justice mm. um, committee. Right. And we, we wanted to kind of twist it in a way that would be more like appropriate with our community, with mm -hmm. the students. We have a lot of our students are also like we have a smaller community and we don't have like, you know, our students population is around 65 students right now mm -hmm. and we don't have like a person that's like holding being the judge and stuff like that yeah, yeah. so we called it the mediation committee an MC and we have a write-up form but we just try to imitate everything that they do but then adjust it to what would serve us and it lasted for a while probably a year and we have like a write-up form and mostly you know people said what happened what they need out of this and then we have a me MC meeting and we call that person in. We mm -hmm. either help them do mediation then or finding out what happened from the other party and kind of try to offer them some resolution. Mm -hmm. Again, this process takes a lot of work and a lot yeah. of commitment from students themselves. And we have always been a school that, you know, if there is an interest from students, we'll go all out, support that. But if there's not a drive from students, where we don't want to just have to keep doing it just for the sake of doing it, yeah. so that didn't like last like very long. Well, the pandemic yeah. happened. The pandemic yeah. happened. Right. That's true <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, that. and then everything shifted. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Those major disruptions really change changing culture. campus. Mm -hmm. Change. Yeah. You know, go go all online. I mean, it mm -hmm. just yeah, it changes everything. And I think that actually is, it becomes an opportunity to re-examine once you come back together. I mean, you had some process being mm -hmm. virtual, but then coming back together and sort of saying, okay, you know, who do, who are we now? This first season has mainly focused on, on well-established schools, like 20 years is perfect. And so one of the things that I found consistently is that there's, that every school has gone through these transformations of one kind or another. Sure, the pandemic's a big one, but like the Brooklyn Free School gave up their property. Uh, now they're mm -hmm. you know, setting up a new campus. There can be so many different ways that these transitions happen. I think that one of the things that really speaks to school communities that are vibrant and alive is that those aren't an ending, mm -hmm. they're a transition, and they're a re-examination. Who are we? Who are we now? Mm -hmm. What is it that we need to bring back, and what is it we need to leave behind? This is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg.